Hi friends and welcome to another video. So, do excuse me. So today I'm going to be reviewing The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Ruffet. I did a buddy read of this with Gemma from Reader Book Gem and I think we both enjoyed it. Um, I've yet to hear her final final thoughts but so far so good and I know for at least myself I absolutely loved this one um i actually gave it a five out of five stars so we are following this wonderful story um set in the caribbean on an island called black conch and the title says it all really but there's so much more to it so we're following david who is a young fisherman and he stumbles on this very I don't even know like this tremendous being he stumbles on a mermaid called and I, I probably will be pronouncing her wrong name wrong because I feel like my words can't my mouth can't form the words properly but it's Ikea that's how I've been pronouncing it in my head Ikea um and they kind of have this this connection from the beginning um and it's kind of like basically their love story um but it's so much more than that it's such an amazing story on like identity um language love loss all these things and it really does feel like the way that the story is interwoven and the characters and how they're displayed it really does feel like a modern day classic in the making this was just absolutely phenomenal a little bit more of a synopsis on the back it says now the island of black conch a fisherman sings to himself while waiting for a catch but david attracts a sea dweller that he never expected ikea an innocent young woman cursed by jealous wives to live as a mermaid. When American tourists capture Ikea, David rescues her and vows to win her trust. Slowly, painfully, she transforms into a woman again. As their love grows, they discover that the world around them is changing and they cannot escape the curse forever. The back does give you like the general synopsis, but really, as I keep saying, it just brings so much more than that. Like I really felt truly invested in this story i cared about the outcome so much so that i had this impending feeling of doom and it almost kind of put me off from picking it up don't get me wrong i was so looking forward to picking this up every opportunity i was like i can't wait to read what happens next but at the same time knowing that something awful was going to occur i just didn't want that i didn't i didn't want to rock the boat fisherman mermaid get it um so to speak but also I was so invested I had to know what happened and I think that's a testament to the writer because it's not that many pages long I think it's just over 200 and yeah just over 200 pages um less than 250 and it just packs such a punch now this is going to completely sound random but mermaid mythology is one of my favorite kind of things to research and just immerse myself in and the folk tales and the lore all around it and I really liked what our author did with this um, interpretation of this mermaid and her myth how she kind of for my mind I enjoyed that she sounded like they, they took a more scientific kind of route but not really I don't mean that to scare anyone off I just mean like realistically it made sense she was sort of described to be akin to like a snake when they're shedding their skin that sort of thing and the way that the material of her tail sloughs off and i won't go into too much detail but those descriptions although kind of gross and <laughs> manky really like i could visualize it and i always have so many detailed like thoughts about mermaids like for example their genitalia where where are they and so I feel like this answered that for me in a way that actually made sense and I could believe it. And I think that in itself added to the enjoyment because I felt like I felt like I could believe, like it just felt incredibly immersive. At the same time as that, it still had this very true to the folklore kind of feel, like it still had that magical, like whimsical, melancholy vibe that made it feel like Oh, it's just a story been told over generations but you felt there so that balance of those two contradicting things I guess you could say worked beautifully and just they complemented each other so well I really enjoyed that this story is kind of told in three different ways so we have um, a more traditional narration uh, told in third person where we are seeing things as they happen so it's set at the time of the events um, this I feel like 
kind of gives greater context to the story because you're having an insight of what's happening around the greater plot that the characters wouldn't necessarily have known um you know or had knowledge to and um, then you've got like a diary entry format told from the perspective of David but from uh, years later and he's kind of reflecting on this, um, his thoughts and feelings at this epic love story with this mermaid, this epic event that had happened to him and kind of all the people that it affected. And then we have Ikea's, I'm going to pronounce the name so wrong, I'm so sorry, but we have her perspective and this one is told more in like a verse-like lyrical quality, um, very sporadically placed within and as she learns more of the language and kind of remembers how to form human words as opposed to, you know, she wasn't using her mouth in that way under the sea. Um, so trying to grasp language again and moving her mouth in ways to create sounds and stuff um the 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 verse like structure got more and more detailed we had more words and it just you could really see her character growth yeah, i really enjoyed that it was told in that sort of way we also have um an inclusion of like people talking in american sign language obviously you can't get a full glimpse of that without seeing it but reading that perspective again just added so much to it and I just feel like it really was a celebration of language as well in all its many forms and yeah that was just done so beautifully as well the whole atmosphere of this story is just so strange and melancholy and tense at times you can really see the tension between um like the landowner who is um a white lady who you you kind of see that resentment and also still that slavery mentality that's still bubbling under the, under the surface because she owns so much of black conch um, and everyone is so overly polite and calls her miss rain and then it's her own kind of struggles with that because she doesn't want all of this she knows that they have her family have profited off of the work of slaves even if they weren't directly slave owners they still then profited off of that land you know and all that they had built and it's just oh my god there's just so much character <sighs> development i can't even call them side plots because they all i feel have such great merit work on their own but they truly do build the story's complexity up together beautifully um, yeah this was just so mystical it was absolutely beautiful it was heart-wrenching it was melancholy and it's just I can't stop thinking about it I think this is definitely going to be an all-time favorite for me and I can imagine continuously thinking about this for a long time so that is my review for the mermaid of black conch let me know if you've read this one and what you thought about it and if you have any recommendations for books similar to this um, this kind of vibe more mermaidy folklore but also feels like you're rooted in truth and belief i would love to hear them thank you so much for watching and i shall speak to you in another video soon bye